with the refutation of Gorgias, uh, Gorgias is silenced and he bows out of the conversation. He's trapped. He knows he's trapped. And so he more or less just stops talking. He chirps in every now and then for the, in the remainder of the dialogue, but he's um, basically done talking to Socrates now. Now, one reaction you might have, and a lot of people have this reaction to Socrates, is that this seems kind of unfair. Gorgias is just a guy kind of going around trying to do his thing, whatever, make a living. And then Socrates, this annoying pesky you know what does he even do he doesn't even do anything he uh, you know he doesn't work he doesn't have a job he's not doing anything for anybody he shows up and just starts asking all these questions i mean and this is kind of polis's reaction look it's really easy to ask a bunch of questions and trip somebody up polis says something like this right it's a lot harder to to answer the questions. And so when Polis enters the conversation, one of the things that he's going to do is try to flip the tables on Socrates, say, I'll ask the questions, Socrates, you answer them. And so you, uh, one reaction a lot of people have is that Gorgias is kind of unfairly treated here, right? He's just berated with all these questions and yeah, okay, he gets tripped up, but that's bound to happen. To be fair, however, um, we didn't talk about this when we were talking about Gorgias, but one of the things Gorgias claimed to do is to be able to answer every question. It's kind of an arrogant, pompous thing to claim, but this is what Gorgias claimed uh, in his presentation. This was a famous claim made by Gorgias, and you can see Gorgias allude to this in the, Gor in the dialogue itself. Gorgias said he could answer any question anybody posed to him, no problem. And so when Socrates shows up asking all these questions, it's part of Gorgias' claim to fame that he can answer any question. And so it's fair game, you might think. And Gorgias claimed that he'd be able to teach his students to answer any question, answer effectively any question put to you. You can answer anything. Right. And so, no, Socrates is just, you know, it's kind of an arrogant, pompous thing. And Socrates is taking it to him, asking him all these questions. Fine. You think you can answer them? And then he trips him up. Right. And he trips him up in the way that we had seen. <clears throat> and so Gorgias realizes he can't answer all these questions, can't answer them consistently, at least. And so he bows out of the conversation. But at that point, Polis jumps in. And Polis, you can tell from the beginning of the dialogue, is eager to jump in. And he jumps into the conversation by rejecting that first claim there. <clears throat> Polis rejects the idea that rhetoric involves knowledge of justice. Polis says, no, you can learn rhetoric and not know about justice at all. Now, you recall Gorgias maintained that you must know about justice because that's how you keep rhetoric looking respectable. But Polis isn't as concerned about that. And so he rejects one. He accepts, it seems, two and three, but two and three on their own are not contradictory. They don't entail any contradiction or inconsistency. And so what Polis says is, fine, while you may have refuted Gorgias, you've um, gotten Gorgias to uh, commit to a contradiction. You haven't done that to me, Socrates, because I reject one. And so there's no, you know, two and three aren't inconsistent. There's no contradiction there. And so you haven't tripped me up yet, Socrates. And so Polis now joins the conversation. He's not been refuted. And we get this conversation between Polis and Socrates. Now, before we go into the details of how that conversation proceeds, I just want to say a couple words about Polis, about this character. Um, <clears throat> we don't have any pictures of Polis. And so I'm just, I just made one for you there. Uh, what we can tell about him from the, so most of the, almost uh, uh, all of the information we have about him comes from the Gorgias itself. It's, uh, we also know a little bit from Aristotle. Aristotle talks about him very briefly. Um, <clears throat> but from the Gorgias, what we can gather about him is that he's much more kind of impulsive, Polis is, say, than Gorgias. He's much more impulsive. He's much more aggressive. Uh, he tries to take the fight. He's much more kind of angered. Um, tries to take the fight to Socrates, right? And he's going to show Socrates that he's an idiot and he's going to refute Socrates, whatever, right? That's kind of Polis. He's much more combative, but he's also less intelligent. One of the things we're going to see is that he can't really follow a conversation. 
He's both kind of too wily, too aggressive, too impulsive, and he seems to lack the kind of um, intellectual sharpness to be able to follow certain distinctions. And we're going to see that as we proceed. Um, kind of more about his biography. We really don't know very much about him. It's unclear. We don't know dates for him. We, it's unclear when he was born and when he died. Based on certain things and allusions in the Gorgias itself, um, it's likely that he was probably in his you know, early to mid-30s in the Gorgias. Uh, we say that because Socrates at one point talks about how Polis is younger. Now he's a youth, at least compared to Socrates and Gorgias. But then <clears throat> Socrates also alludes to a book that Polis had written. And so Polis had to be a, he couldn't have been like a teenager or something like that. And Polis, the best guess, mid to early 30s, given various things said about him. <clears throat> He's from Athens. We know that. And we know that he is an aspiring teacher of rhetoric. And so that's why he's following around Gorgias. He's with Gorgias because he's trying to become like Gorgias. He wants to be like Gorgias. Now, one thing I want to mention about this, that's not Gorgias' typical student <clears throat> or typical follower. Most of Gorgias' students, Gorgias' typical student was not an aspiring teacher of rhetoric. Gorgias' typical student was an aspiring politician, someone who is going to try to go make speeches for themselves. And so Polis is a bit of a um, atypical case. Not that he's a student of Gorgias right now. He's too old for that. But he's interested in Gorgias not because he wants to go be a politician. He's interested in Gorgias, Polis is, because he's trying to be like Gorgias. He wants to go around the Greek world uh, charging a, a bunch of money for lessons in rhetoric. Polis wants to be an aspiring teacher of rhetoric, and he's trying to learn that trade from the greatest teacher of rhetoric in the ancient world, Gorgi. 